So we get the season three roadmap. Keep in mind that this is just the blog covering the content coming next season. We'll get a patch notes on April 3rd, about an hour before the update. That's pretty standard. I'm gonna go ahead and put timestamps so you can kind of skip to the section that's most important. Uh, so we'll go kind of just in order. I think uh, the first section is Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. It looks like there's gonna be the six maps, which is pretty good. So six core 66 maps are coming season three, including three that are brand new. One that's remastered and two repurposed from Vondel and Rebirth Island points of interest. Four game modes that we know of. Capture the flag, leads, and then we'll continue on there. And then season three ranked, obviously it'll continue. Uh, make sure you get your rewards if you haven't already. You only got a week left on that. And perk up soldier. Uh, change how you play multiplayer with the addition of three new perk vest, new boots, and new gear. So just adding more content. Six star, this will be available at launch. Looks pretty cool, bright, vibrant. Uh, I'm not mainly a 6v6 guy, but it looks, I mean, the map looks cool for what they are. Then we got core uh, map is uh, Emergency. So that one's a small size map. I'm really liking the small size maps because it kind of just gets tedious playing only shipment or only rust or whatever. Having the availability of meat and other maps like that, uh, that, that have been introduced has been nice to mix it up if you just want to get in, get some challenges done especially since the challenges aren't so heavy on the long shot uh, perspective. You don't need a bunch of those. And then we got Grow House, which this will also be at launch. This is a new remastered uh, Core 6v6 small size, so that one should be pretty cool. And then we have Tanked. This will be at launch as well, new repurposed Core 6v6 medium size. So that one, you can see kind of the layout there. And then we got uh, mid-season, we got Checkpoint, uh, which is new repurposed. Uh, small size so that'll be cool for what it is and then we got grime which is a brand new map that'll come in the mid-season you can see that's more of a medium size with kind of like the little side over there so cool 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 four new map uh, modes okay so we got capture the flag that'll be there from the get-go one in the chamber that'll be in the launch window probably after the playlist update or whatever the case is and then we got minefield which will be in mid-season all right, that'll be something we'll have to check out. Escort, this one's one they're bringing back. Normally, you you know guide the robot or a drone or something like that, so that's kind of cool. Mid-season, then we got the Vortex playlist, which is all those modified maps. I mean, Sledgehammer Games has actually done quite a good job, I think, in multiplayer. I don't really get hooked on multiplayer beyond doing the camo challenges and upgrading some stuff every now and then. I think it's cool that there's a ton of content for people that enjoy that, especially having ranked every season update. Uh, there's going to be new rewards, which is kind of cool. And then you'll be able to just level up and gain that. You can get the little Charizard thing for level 50. <laughs> At least that's what it kind of looks like. Uh, and there you got to go. The different rewards, pretty straightforward. You can kind of pretty standard what we get with that stuff. New perks. So we're going to have the Gunslinger, the Modular Assault Rig, uh, which that's Scavenger Compression, this Quick Fix. So we get the quick fix, high antenna, uh, high grain, high gain antenna, and then reinforced boots. So those will probably be like EOD. And what's the gunslinger one? Do? Okay, so uh, secondary weapon specialist, secondary weapon slot, no primary slot. Two. Oh, this is underkill. That's actually kind of cool. I've always kind of wanted that, especially when you do challenges. If you want to run two pistols, pistol and a melee weapon. That's cool that you'll be able to uh, do that now. It's a little bit late. I wish they would launch the game with that. So you can do overkill stuff when you want to do overkill and underkill when you want to do underkill. Especially if like you want to do pistols and like a launcher, you can do your launcher challenges. You know what I mean? So it's kind of one of those things. Um, that'll be kind of cool. And then we got quick fix. Okay, refresh the stamina on kill. Following benefits applied to secondary weapons only. Improved reload speed. Uh, reload speed while spring. Okay, that's kind of cool. So it's kind of just all around a cool little thing. Modular assault rig. Uh, this one will be start with the maximum reserve ammo. So that's a scavenger and then resupply lethals and tacticals from dead players. That could be actually kind of cool. Compression carrier immediately regenerates health after a kill or objective capture. So it's quick fix boots immune to movement reduction effects. Okay. I don't think those are all too common, but yeah, it's good to have that. And then the mini map is zoomed out for you and your nearby allies. The high gain antenna. That's cool. That will be mid season. Tactical enhanced vision goggles. What the hell? They're like outline toggle between normal vision and enhanced vision with integrated target highlighting has limited battery. That's kind of crazy. Wonder if that'll actually make its way to Warzone. I don't think so. So that's multiplayer. Let's get into modern warfare zombies. I don't expect much. Sadly, it feels like they've uh, kind of 
had a limited budget on zombies and they just decided not to pursue it. It, it actually had tons of potential and it just doesn't look like they are planning on continuing it and supporting it, which is unfortunate because I think the mode has a lot of potential, but it does require a lot of support, which it just doesn't seem to be getting. The dark the story continues. Take a chance on Jansen as a full scale rescue mission is launched after the doctor enters a new and terrifying region of the dark ether. Take on the third rift. An ethereal voidscape houses insanity inducing horrors within and in, including a new and diabolical disciple variant. Provide fire support for Ravanov and Dr. Jansen before she consumed by darkness. Season 3 challenges and schematics. Unlock prestige levels to acquire zombie challenges. And gather new schematics to aid your progress, including a way to disguise yourself among mercenaries. Deadwire your explosive weaponry and outlast the gas. Warlord, we get a new one, which is Rainmaker. I think they just need to cut the mercenary stuff and just do all zombie stuff. but. I think all this stuff was planned out so far ahead. It's like too late to change the script, right? Hold up on Raha Island. This heavily armored psychopath makes it rain artillery fire and has little regard for its own forces. Though his compound is easy to reach, stepping foot on the island with your limbs still attached may be more of a challenge. Dark Ether story continues. Um, so you'll be going through the portal. Additional quest. All right, so this is uh, part, another part of uh, Almazra. This third Dark Aether Rift is just as ornery as the past two. Expect a series of unlock objectives focusing on finding and tuning several relics, allowing access through the gate. Accomplish these tasks to step into the ethereal voidscape and face the horrifying terror lurking within, claiming valuable rewards if you survive, squad up, and help. Operation Deadbolt continue. It'll probably just be kind of like what we had. You get the one story mission. You get an item from that. It kind of gives you a couple clues on how to get the other items. You put the pedestals down. Boom. You open up the rift. You go in. Do it the first time. You're going to get an Elder Sigil. Once you get the Elder Sigil, then you'll be able to get the schematics. Pretty straightforward, simple uh, thing. So we got the dead wire detonators. Um, and we got the golden mask filter. And then we also have Sergeant Beret. So obviously, there's new weapons. Okay, the new... Yeah, okay, so the Deadwire Detonator. Are you still shocked at the impressive electrical damage the Deadwire ammo mod inflicts? Then you might want to employ the Deadwire Detonator and attach it to all of your explosive weaponry, including lethals and launchers. Okay. Golden Mask Filter Schematic. A prize schematic with a shiny hue and an impressive long-lasting effect. Gain a self-regenerating gas mask for the rest of the match. This, this comes extremely handy for ex uh, surviving zombie strongholds and any surprises in the rifts. That's kind of crazy. I mean, not like the gas masks go a long way, but maybe for the, like the red worm, you don't even have to worry about restocking or whatever. Sergeant Beret. Okay, so we get your outcomes no longer need to be terminal when dealing with Zakrov's hired guns. Simply don the Sergeant's Beret to disguise yourself among the mercs and summon a trusty Merc bodyguard who shadows you to the end. Weird. All right. Then we get this dude. All right, cool. And then that's pretty much that. We'll see kind of how that goes. Probably more of that's going to be coming in mid-season, I would imagine. And then we get Warzone overviews. Big Map is getting no love. And I don't know if that's just because nobody's playing Big Map. But there's not really much of a reason to because there really hasn't been content there. But happy Rebirth Day. Welcome back to Rebirth Island. Keeping in mind that... Alcatraz back in BO4 dropped on April 2nd. So this is just a day later, five years, five years in one day, right? It's kind of crazy that we've had this map for five years. Call of Duty players tend to love the same map. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. We want to play the same thing forever. While there's the other ones like give us something new. And those people are always battling, but it is what it is. Return to Rebirth, points of interest intel. It says swimming in water combat, submerged in new shoreline access points. So biometric scanners, smart displays, weapon trade stations, a new resurgence champions quest, variable time of day that changes the atmospheric mood, but not the visibility of actions that they learn from Vondel Fog. Infill strikes where the water tower, lighthouse, and even the prison roof are destroyed at your infill, as your infill begins. We'll detail all this later in the blog, but this moment, let's reacquaint ourselves with 11 major POIs. So we got bioweapons, which got a little bit of a facelift, even though it still looks busted. You can see kind of just looks clean and clear. Industry, this used to be called Decon, I believe. I think they just changed the name or people called it Decon. I don't remember now, uh, but you can see it looks pretty good. Pretty straightforward. The ramp comes through. It's all the way you expect it to be. 
nice and clear inside. Uh, and then that also includes the water tower area with the helicopter pad. All right, pretty straightforward. Chemical engineering. All right, we can kind of see how that looks. Uh, chemical engineering, just different other vantage points. They still got all these windows. They did paint it up quite a bit. Does look good. Dock. Uh, you can see they added this little walkway over here and these little two things that connect there. So that's kind of a little bit difference there. Looks like there's an underground section now. Is that what this is looking at? This tunnel? Ah, maybe you can actually access in there. Those weren't accessible. Because obviously once you touch the water before in Warzone 1, just insta-die. Now that that's going to be quite a little different. Uh, we got the dock. Control center. Uh, still pretty much looks the same, I think. Uh, you obviously get the buy station here, and then the buy station on the top left. Prison, uh, you can see initially is pretty solid. There's no holes in it, and that's one of the things that the trailer wasn't clear about Then they ended up tweeting about. I put it in the community notes. So if you guys saw that, you guys understand that basically the map looks kind of the way it was when we left it, when they switched over to Warzone 2, which is a huge mistake in my opinion, but it was what it was. Um, so it's going to look like that, plus we get the colors and, and updated, whatever. But uh, each match, there's going to be random chance where most of the time it's not going to happen. But uh, every once in a while, it will happen that there's going to be an event that starts at the match, like when you're loading in. Kind of like Vondel, where the helicopter comes and crashes in, uh, and, and it does that event. It'll do one of those, but it'll destroy a piece of the map. One of three different POIs, which I'm sure that we're going to talk about. So we got prison overview and rooftops. Kind of see how that looks. So you can see showers still kind of looks like the same. I thought they modified it slightly. They did modify the lighting there. It looks like they added this little truck here in the prison area by the water tower. You can see this truck wasn't there. And this is all dirt. This was paved before. Harbor, they also added another building here uh, on the back side, which is kind of like this little building you can kind of see on my cursor. Uh, there's a little building there, so pretty straightforward. This is the building I'm talking about, this one with the big O6 on it. This has been added, so that's a newer newer spot. Uh, I guess that helps for like transitioning from this building up to the other side. Um, now it's not a no man's land with just some units of electrical units or whatever there. You actually have another building, which you can kind of see right here. It looks like there's some tunnel stuff too. So that's going to be the interesting part, learning that. I wonder if they're going to keep the player count the same, because I believe it was 40. Uh, for solos, duos, and trios, or solo duos and quads, but the 42 for trios. So I wonder if they're going to keep the player count because obviously they've expanded it just a little bit. And then also the player base has kind of gotten accustomed to 70 players on Vondel. So I'm not saying they need to bump it up to 70 or anything, but it, like 40 might be, feel like slow for some people, I think, when it first starts. Factory. I like the color changes they've done for some of this stuff. It just does make it look different. And how the map will change dynamically with the lighting is going to be cool. Living quarters still pretty much kind of looks the same. But now you can actually get in the water, which is a nice little change there. Tents kind of look the same. Uh, stronghold. It looks like there's more. Like, it just looks different. I don't know how else to say it. It just definitely looks different. So, uh, live. So there's attack map is now live. So that'll be cool if you want to check the individual POIs. Uh, modes and public events. So Call of Duty Warzone Bootcamp launch. So this will be hopefully for new players. Okay. Oh, available on Urzikstan. So this will be probably for new players. So it's 44 players. Uh, 20 of them are real players and 24 are bots. Uh, attack this new training mode set on a randomized slice of Urzikstan. Expanding the Modern Warfare 3 training course. Which launched in season two, the all new Call of Duty boot camp is designed to help new players build some confidence. That should have been there from the get go. Because the game has been out long enough, the, the skills of the average player has increased. So the entry to bear like the barrier to entry is a little bit higher. So new players coming in, it could be a little bit rough, but that's kind of how it goes, right? So Rebirth Resurgence will be there at launch, available. This will be 44 players. So that's the number they've gone with. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. Rebirth Resurgence loaded mid-season. Uh, available on Rebirth Island. Dish the ground loot and match of Resurgence and bring in your preferred loadout. So it's like plunder where you bring in your gun and you just keep respawning. Could be interesting. Could be broken. <laughs> Rebirth Lockdown. So obviously Lockdown instead of Vondo. It'll be with 28 players. Uh, new public event, Rebirth Infield Strikes. So these are the ones that are be available in season. So, okay, Rebirth Island has numerous landmarks you utilize in almost every game. But what if one of those locations was leveled by an airstrike just prior to infield? Keep your wits about you and learn. Okay, so that'll be kind of cool. 
So initially for the first few, like the m first month, um, we're going to have it just the way it is. No weird offense, no nothing. And then at the mid season, they'll freshen it up a little bit by adding these dynamic events that are randomized and not that common for one of three different POIs. So that'll be good. So it says lighthouse gets it. And this is where it destroys the, the lighthouse literally. And it knocks it over and you can see it turns it into a ramp so that you can go up on top of prison, but it essentially levels that building at the start of the match. So you'll, you won't actually be like, Oh, it's going to happen. And it destroys your building. It's like it happens at the start of the match, uh, before you are even able to jump out of the plane. And then we got prison, which is going to get destroyed. And then we also have water tower. Nice. So that'll be kind of interesting to have something different dynamic. And there it goes. New public event, Gulag Climb and Punishment. So available on Battle Royale, Urzikstan and Vondal, a Gulag player account, a duel to the death isn't the only option. If you find yourself in a Gulag during a Battle Royale, if the public event is announced as the start of your Gulag, it's worth keeping your comms on and negotiating with your opponent. Two ladders will drop from the roof providing an easy escape route. And it's up to you to both trust each other and ascend to redeployment. Or you can engage in combat as normal and ignore the ladders or pretend to agree escaping and then double cross. Dang, that could be kind of interesting. I don't know if it necessarily needed that, but cool. Public men, heavy armor. All right, available on rebirth resurgence mode announced during infill. The public event is activated. It allows you some added protection, enabling equipping or an additional armor plate for the duration of the match. This extra plate slot is visible above your health. Oh, that's kind of crazy. The extra plate slot is applied no matter the plate carrier type you have equipped. Wow, that's kind of a weird dynamic. They could test higher TTKs. In that mode, you might want to have a different loadout because of the way the math works with 350 health. That's kind of uh, interesting. SMG meta could change in that because of mag damage per mag could really become important because that's going to determine how many downs you can get per 350 or whatever the case is. Interesting. New mission contract spy drone. This will be available about the launch. Um, it says confirmation of spy drones of unknown origin have been observed with an area. The operation has resulted in a new contract to undertake. You and your squad are locate the drones, which appear to gathering data at specific destinations, head to the rendezvous point and immediately destroy them. Expect additional rewards for neutralizing the swarm and ensure you inspect the vicinity of the dropped armor plates, redeploy drones, and possibly advance UAV. Fair warning, enemy operators active in the area can steal these rewards if they reach. Yeah, okay. And then the new champ, this one's going to be crazy. I think like, I've never been interested in Champions Quest, but like a resurgence version, this, this is going to be crazy fun. Uh, available on Rebirth Island, the ultimate contract mission is confirmed. Um, to be active on Rebirth Island, once a certain number of consecutive wins, total number of wins are achieved, bring the game plan, some competent cohorts with you while you wait for, locate, and then defend the three elements necessary. It could just be a little bit harder because of how fast you got to go ahead and load those up. New equipment. What are we doing? Damn, we're just getting unlimited stuff. So it says trio squads. Green has battle rage. All right. The effect is deployed to the area. Step three, purple within... Oh, okay. So that's just the squad rage one. If they're in proximity, they'll get buffed. So if you see your teammate in a fight, you can actually pop that while they're fighting. That sounds incredibly broken, probably more annoying than, than I want to deal with, but it is what it is. We'll see how that goes. New equipment utility box. Uh, so that one's going to come with running. It's a, it's just an armor and ammunition combined. And then we get the foresight in season. They are cooking a rebirth package specialist in season. In fact, it's only very rarely found at blank or in specific blank, but its effectiveness cannot be understated. Once found, it grants you every applicable perk in the game and continues to function even if you subsequently access your loadout drop with your chosen perks. In addition to the default perks available to all operators, Tac Pass Commando Specialist grants you an advantage of the following 29 additional perks. Yeah, that's that's nuts. Updated movement aquatic gameplay comes to Rebirth Island. All right, available. The biometric scanner. Okay. Uh, dotted around Rebirth Island upgraded communications facilities is a series of 10 biometric scanners, terminals that include full biometric scanning capabilities. Once per match where these scanners are active, you can approach a biometric scanner and quickly check your statistics. The scanner produces a key card based on your identity placed directly into the ba a backpack 
along with an XP reward. Inspect the key card and you'll see it contains your operator name, clan tag, and access level. These take up a slot in your backpack, can be dropped or looted, and can unlock special menu in any rever- What? Key card rarity, there's six different- What the heck is this? This is like from DMZ stuff, right? That, that they brought over. Obviously, they're not that, just your rarity of a uh, dog tag. Uh, but they're calling them key cards, right? The percentage chance of receiving an individual rarity is blank, but your chances improve if your squad mate is close by during a scan or if you repeat the scanning process in the next uh, IRL day. So you just keep doing them. Buy station access and match rewards. What the hell? So bronze, you get random ammunition, cash, armor plates, lethals, and tacticals. And it goes all the way up to free equipment, selecting the buy station, blank weapons, and additional. All right. That one's one we'll have to play with and figure out what the heck's going on with that. New feature, variable time of day. Look, they have three. Dusk, day, and night. That is going to be sick. Uh, like, I'm all for like this. Like, this is, this is what they need to be doing on every map. Imagine if a Sheikah, we could just phase out this one entirely and then we get a day and a dusk. It would have been so much better of a map. Uh, even though the map plays like okay, it's not great. The fact that the lighting is so terrible and depressing, it, it was a big knock on that map. Okay, as season three progresses, the atmospheric conditions of Rebirth Island may begin to vary with an increasing chance of variable changes to the weather. The visibility of your squad and enemy and players is overriding importance as the weather mainly serves as a pleasing new ambiance to the backdrop you're fighting in. Nice. So it looks a little bit murky, but yeah, you can see these. That, that's cool. I like that ID. Uh, smart display at launch. Available. Bolted onto either exterior of the wall across Rebirth Island, there are over a dozen smart display panels offering operators the latest in Coney propaganda, the general weather forecast, and more tactically, where the largest heat zone is. Ah, uh, wow. Operators who've secured biometric scanner key cards may also be shown on these big screens, as well as the first demon operator to hit 10, 15, or even 20 kills in the game. That's cool. They brought that over from like Apex, but like modified. Holy man, this is squad assemble and squad play bonus launch. Available in resurgence, including, okay, full squad landing squads. All right, the squad that stays together slays together during the infield resurgence. Expect to earn match rewards if you land near your more enthusiastic teammates who led the way. When activating, you'll receive a message to land with the squad and earn bonuses. This is purely optional. Though you may find staying closer during enemy encounters, Helps your overall team dynamic as well as getting those W's. Full squad landing, all quads, all four operators landing, radi radii overlap with at least one other. Um, three, four, okay. In match rewards. What did, what are they doing, bro? They're just giving, uh, they're taking care of Rebirth Island, bro. <laughs> Mark the landing destination. Each member receives XP if any uh, teammate pings the location where you land first, uh, before first in squad. Okay. Full squad landing, all squad uh, receive a sizable XP and cash bonus, as well as a supply UAV, which will help you with looting. Uh, quads and trios land with two or other quads. One or more uh, cash bonus as well. Supply UAV, half squad. Okay, you receive a modest amount of cash. Returning feature, weapons trade stations. These are cool. Those will be later in season. Uh, common, yeah, ultra, five attachment, yes. Uh, so unsubstantiated intel. Okay, it seems that the island contains a great many secrets, perhaps some completely undiscoverable. Uh, all of this is off the books and some redacted requiring a multi-step process, a multitude of challenges, not remain, uh, redacted, right? Oh, too much redacted. Bunker entrances. This is be in season. They'll open those up. So those will initially be closed on the different locations and then they'll open those up. And that'll be in Urzikstan. All right, finally, Urzikstan getting something. <laughs> uh, but it'll be in season. And then Rebirth. So launch window essentially means that like when the update goes live, it'll probably be a couple hours or even the next day later to make sure the launch is smooth. Because if you guys remember last time, uh, like two seasons ago, you couldn't even get your loadout. Things were bugged, whatever. So that'll be kind of cool. We'll be, we'll be rocking that and see kind of where that goes. And then you got those various rewards. Quite a bit of rewards, but... Um, number one's going to get something this time around. All right, cool. And then Warzone Mobile, they get their updates. I'm sorry. I'm not, I mean, I know you could skip around, but this will be linked in the bottom. I'm not really interested in covering Warzone Mobile beyond the initial impressions that I gave at, at launch. So connected content overview. This actually covers for all of them. 
Here's the new gun. So we get a new submachine gun. We get a new sniper rifle. Uh, and we get a melee weapon. Ooh. Gladiator. That's just a punch knife, isn't it? Or whatever it's called. Battle 27. This will be mid-season. That'll be cool. Uh, and then we're going to have some aftermarket parts. A bunch of those. They, pff, this update is going to be crazy. And obviously Black Cell or whatever. Battle Pass. Yep. Snoop Dogg. Let's go again for the 10th time. And Chin Chin Chan. <laughs> no way, bro. Look at these skins. Oh, my God. Godzilla versus Kong. New Empire bundles. They're doing another uh, event with that. Tons of stuff, bro. They're, oh, a sloth. What the hell? That's my son's actual favorite uh, animal. So he, he'll probably be asking for that. Too bad it's a weed one, too. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Uh, and then we got da, 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 Prestige Rewards. Let's go. All right. Tons of content to break down. I'm sure we're going to be talking about it more on the polls. Check if you want to check it out live. Uh, it'll be live today. Uh, link near the top of the description. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.